Let's now continue on and take a look at some of the specific differences between mitosis and meiosis, and then that might help you understand some of the specific stages um, that are happening and which of those stages you should be focusing on. And I'll tell you right now, in meiosis, prophase 1 is very, very important. Okay, so let's see. What kind of cells does the process occur in? In mitosis, we said it's for all body cells. Another fancy way to say body cells is somatic cells. Um, but in meiosis, we're only talking about... Um, the process happening in sex cells or gametes. Because you'll notice that at the end of meiosis, if you count up the number of chromosomes that are left over, it ends up being halved. In mitosis, every cell of 46 chromosomes ends up becoming two cells of 46 chromosomes. In meiosis, you end up with four cells, each one with 23 chromosomes that are in there. So that leads us to the next question. Does um, do these processes produce ha diploid cells or haploid cells? And in mitosis, since you're producing more body cells, they are all diploid. In meiosis, all of those cells end up being haploid. So does the process produce identical or unique cells? In mitosis, you are just simply separating sister chromatids, and the sister chromatids are just exact copies of the original chromosomes. So um, they should be identical cells. There may be some errors that happen, but if in everything that's happening normally, mitosis should be producing uh, identical cells. However, meiosis produces unique cells, and unique cells come out from a couple of different ways. One, we said crossing over where genetic information gets exchanged. Another, random assortment, the way they align on the equator during metaphase one um, flip-flopped around, there's many different combinations, 2 to the power of 23 possible combinations of arranging themselves on the equator. So that's going to make them very, very unique. And this makes sense because in meiosis, we're producing sperm cells and egg cells. Um, making babies is a random process. Wait, wait, wait. Making babies is not a... Making babies produces random variations. Okay, let's, let's rethink how we say that. Uh, your kids will be genetically unique. Unless they're twins, that's a different situation. More on that later in the reproduction unit. But meiosis produces unique, unique cells, which is important. All right, now we get to some specific... Oh, how many stages take place? Mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. That's four in meiosis. Prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. All right. Do homologous chromosomes align side by side? And if so, during which stage? And so this is important. In mitosis, that doesn't happen. Those 23, remember there's 46 total, 23 red ones, 23 blue ones, just to help with color organization. But in mitosis, it doesn't matter uh, that those 23 actually have a pair that came that is the same size that matches it um, they just all line up totally randomly in the center and it doesn't make a difference because they're just going to be split down the middle sister chromatids and you're going to end up with two identical cells but in meiosis the homologous chromosomes do find each other and i guess what i'm trying to ask with this question is when they line up at the equator what stage is that and where does that actually happen in mitosis and meiosis? And the answer for mitosis is no, they don't find each other. But for meiosis, yes. Uh, in metaphase one, you'll see very neatly that they'll line up there. They are lined up in the center uh, with their homologous chromosome next to them. But they've actually already found each other in prophase one. Um, and that's going to come up again in this question down here. But next question first. At which stage does the separation of sister chromatids occur? Well, in mitosis, there's only one stage of separation, and that is anaphase. In meiosis, be careful, though, because the sister chromatids don't separate until the second round. The homologous chromosomes separate during anaphase 1, but the sister chromatids don't separate until anaphase 2, the second round. So watch out for that. Does crossing over happen? Well, crossing over helps to produce genetic variation. Mitosis is not about that. It doesn't happen at all. Yes, it does happen my in meiosis, and it happens at the very first stage of meiosis, which is actually uh, prophase 1. And then finally, how many cell divisions take place in each round? Mitosis just divides once to produce two cells. Meiosis divides once to produce two cells, and then a second time to divide those two cells further, and so we end up with two rounds of division. That hopefully should give you a nice overview of the differences between mitosis and meiosis so that you don't get confused about them in the future. Here is a nice question to take a look at. In the following diagram, which pair 
represents homologous chromosomes. So if I look, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, well these look like they are two sister chromatids, but this is one chromosome though, that's still one chromosome. 4 is still one chromosome, 3 is one chromosome, 6 is referring to one chromosome, but each of these chromosomes here consists of two sister chromatids. So which are homologous chromosomes? Well, homologous chromosomes, they should match in uh, shape and size and the location of their genes. Um, one and two, that's not going to be it. If I use process of elimination here, uh, do I have a pen? Okay, I've got my pen. Let's see, one and two are not homologous chromosomes. Those are two sister chromatids. How about three and four? Three and four, that's one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. That's another chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids, but they are not homologous because they're not the same size and length. So three and four out, two and five. Two is referring to one of the sister chromatids of this chromosome. Five is a totally different sister chromatid from this chromosome. That seems totally wrong to me too. Okay, I've arrived at my correct answer, but let's check. Four and six. Four is one chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. This six is another chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. And look, they look to be the same size. That represents homologous chromosomes. So actually these two would actually be homologous chromosomes as well. Okay, hopefully that helped out. If you have any questions about meiosis, go back and watch the videos again or post a question on Edimodo. All right, have a nice day.